Um, hello everyone, I hope you are hear me well. So, on behalf of Data Art from Lviv, I wish you happy Halloween or sweet or treat. Actually, I have no idea what actually people say to each other in this day. By the way, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Aksana Piven. I work in at the Institute of Molecular Biology and Genetics in Kyiv. So I'm working in the field of molecular genetics, first of all, and uh, I'm interested in the field of heart biology. Um, in my lab, we are going to analyze the gene function in heart development and heart adaptation during physical endurance training as well as aging. And for this purpose, we are using two really nice mice model, actually we are using quite specific mice, genetic modified uh, with condition on account of gene of interest and uh, uh, transgenic mice. Besides of this, we are also interested in heart regeneration and right now we are running quite interesting project where we are using CRISPR-Cas system for cells reprogramming. What does it mean? Probably you know that after heart infarct, after heart attack, at least uh, um, 25% of cardiomyocytes, it means working cells of our heart, are going to be dying, right? And um, these cells are replaced by um, fibr fibroblasts, fibrosis tissue. And of course, it's very really negatively affected on heart function. So, main idea of our project, project we are going to use CRISPR-Cas for reprogramming this fibroblast in zone uh, of uh, injury, in zone of heart injury, to cardiomyocyte-like cells. So, and today we are going to talk about some uh, things, some interesting things in the field of molecular genetics, genetics, biotechnology, and cell technology. So, uh, first, what we should to know first, right? Actually, um, why actually we are talking about gene editing and who was first? Actually, first scientist who did it, it was Paul Berg, Nobel winner of Nobel, Pri Nobel Prize winner. And uh, he uh, fused it to together genes from different organisms, from bacteria and from viruses. Actually, he created first recombinant DNA, or first chimeric DNA. And at the same time, he opened a new direction in biology. Actually, now we call him father of... Uh, gene engineering science or father combinant DNA techniques. And how it's work? Actually, it's quite easy scam, but actually we are able now to cut one gene from any kind of organism and introduce this gene into genome any kind of other organism. For example, a uh, human gene which coded insulin. You know all well what is this, right? We all need this ferment. We all need this hormone. And uh, so we are able to cut this gene and introduce in genome of bac in, into genome of bacteria. Such kind of uh, genetically modified bacteria will produce human insulin for our purpose, for medical purpose, actually for humans who have diabetes. And so this, this insulin would be much better than any other synthetic hormone or insulin from pigs, for example. So it works really nice. And uh, for today, uh, many, many actually genetically modified organs already created. Mostly there are plants and uh, microorganisms, yeast, but a lot of animals also created. And uh, during last year, actually, topic about human gene editing coming, be, coming, uh, uh, coming to be hotter and hotter. And why? Because new, very powerful and promising instrument actually was de uh, d described and de discovered. And uh, uh, yeah, I forgot to show you this nice example about gene modification. Actually, uh, I gave you example about insulin and now other example. For example, one group of scientists, they studied this green flu fluorescent protein in jellyfish and gene of this uh, protein. And now we have really nice collection of green animals and plants. So. It's uh, set all these animals and plants, all these organisms are modificated and they express this mm, green fluorescent protein from jellyfish, actually. Uh, pretty nice animals and uh, really useful for scientific purpose. But it's also 
actually, it's also pos possible to use the same strategy and new powerful tools to create uh, any kind of modified organism and even improve function of our body, improve some of, some of our genes, for example. And uh, this new instrument, CRISPR-Cas, so more probably it's difficult to find people who never hear something about that and also maybe you also do something about these techniques. But what is it? First of all, it's, uh, let's say, immune system of bacteria. Actually, um, it's not like our immune system, of course, but we, we can uh, compare this system with our immune system. It's defense of bacteria against viruses attacks. And uh, there are many two components of this system. First of all, huge protein, green one, is Cas9 protein. And namely, this protein able uh, to bind DNA, orange, you can see this huge molecular by orange color, bind with DNA and cut it. And other important component, it's small RNA, specific RNA, we call them glide RNA. It's purple, col pu purple color. So, Namely, this glide RNA actually um, uh, specifically recognize uh, specific DNA sequences and uh, seed or hold this huge protein in proper place on DNA. So thankfully to glide RNA, we are able to manage what kind of gene and in which place would be uh, affected. So, but what's going on in cell after CRISPR-Cas uh, working, actually. Uh, after DNA damaged, cells tried to use their own uh, repair system for rep fix this DNA problem, let's say, right? And very often, uh, uh, cells make a lot of mistakes. And this is one of way to get gene knockout or gene dysfunction. So, and scientists actually use these uh, approaches for gene studying and for gene uh, function investigation. Other approaches, actually, we are able, together with CRISPR-Cas system, gave to the cell a DNA matrix with that information, what we need. For example, let's say with healthy DNA sequencing, with needle information, uh, with information about other gene. And in this way, we are able to knock in new gene in absolutely other organisms, like human gene, for example, or we are able to fix mutation in this organism. So you can see that, this, uh, that uh, these techniques are really, really very powerful and promising, and of course we should be thankful to bacteria for this tool. And uh, I'm trying to avoid a lot of specific technical details, and if it would be interesting for you, you can ask me later, but uh, my message for you today is that uh, CRISPR cas much easily and cheaper than older techniques, and it's very important. And uh, of course, as all in this world, CRISPR cas also has dark side of the moon, and it's of target effect. What does it mean? When uh, Cas9 cut its DNA, very often, unfortunately for us. Uh, Cas9 recognize wrong places, so a lot of mistakes created in cells, and we actually should uh, take an account, of course. And uh, this, and uh, even with this target effect, actually the field of application even now is extremely huge and going to be bigger and bigger. And even now, CRISPR-Cas actively use it in science and for science. What does it mean? It means, as I told you before, genes function and structure studying, first of all. Genes knockout, genes knocking. And it uh, analysis of chromatin rearrangement and structure. It's also very important for understanding how cell dividing and uh, understanding all these things and tricks. And second one, of course, it's also very important, is agriculture for creation new crops with better characteristics, better producers, more uh, resistant against any kind of pat pat pathogens infection, for example. And of course, um, uh, for um, genome editing, as I told you before, uh, special variants of CRISPR-Cas system people try to use for cells reprogramming, for example. As we do in, in our lab, as I told you, we are also using CRISPR-Cas, one of variants of CRISPR-Cas for cell reprogramming. So, for turn cell from one fate 
to other one from fibroblast to working cardiomyocytes. So it's also possible to do and CRISPR-Cas gave us such kind of possibility. And uh, other, of course, CRISPR-Cas even now actively using in medicine, for example, for drug development, for drug creation, for gene, uh, for gene mutation editing, and of course, even for editing of human's embryo genome. And uh, probably you know this story, or maybe not, but these uh, two babies, Lula and Nana, com came to be international news in November 2018. Actually, Professor Yan Kui, who created them or modified their genome, uh, says that uh, Lula and Nana came in the world, cr crying in the world as healthy as any other baby. But is it true or not? Let's see. So, what Professor Yan Kui did? First of all, he changed this interesting gene, CCR5. Uh, actually, whole people here, and not only here, uh, inherit this gene uh, from parents, of course. One copy from mother and other copy from father. And normally, we have wild type uh, wild type variant of this gene. But around 1% of uh, Western European has uh, mutation in these genes. It uh, actually um, doesn't affect it on health system, but uh, provides really strong protective from HIV viruses. You can see here, actually, product of uh, these genes is special receptor. And we can call, we can compare this receptor like uh, gate for virus invasion in our white blood cells. So such people has such kind of genetically protection. And uh, unfortunately, for Asian and Native American, American, this mutation not widespread in that population. And uh, Professor He decided to fix it. <laughs> he decided to use CRISPR-Cas and introduce this mutation in uh, girls' genomes when they were only on the, in the stage of one cell, on the zygote cells. And why he decided to, you, to do that? Actually, it's an interesting situation because a uh, father of the girls, actually, he's HIV positive and mom, absolutely healthy person. So professor decided to create such kind of protection for girl, for her own life. And he changed germline. What does it mean? It means that, um, I hope you all know that uh, we have two, basically we have two types of cells in whole our body. Somatic cells, it means cells of whole our body and germline, namely our uh, sperms and eggs, actually cells what we are using for breeding, right? <laughs> so, and uh, this mutation actually affected on germline. germline. It means that girls will be carry out this mutation and pass it to the kids in future. And uh, what also interesting, uh, for example, uh, one of the girl, Lulu, uh, she has mutation only in one copy of genes, but none in the other copy of genes. With the normal copy of CCR5 genes, it seems like uh, she hasn't any protection from HIV viruses. But as a girl, uh, like Professor He climate and reported in Hong Kong last uh, year on huge biotical summit, uh, she has mutation in both of uh, in both copy of this gene. So it seems she has protection against these viruses, and probably it's good for girls. Actually, we haven't any idea what's going on with these girls now because uh, first of all. Professor here work, uh, you know, it was it, it was really like informative bomb in media. A lot of leading scientists really criticize his for this work. First of all, uh, for, for many pur purposes, but here I'm going to touch only biological issue. First of all, because it was really very very early to use CRISPR-Cas for changing germline in humans embryo when our knowledge is so small about all this system and about, you know, actually our genome also. And as a purpose, it's gene. Why namely this gene? Why namely HIV resistance? 
uh, especially now we have a lot of uh, really good scheme of treatment for people who are already positive and you know it's uh, absolutely gave them possibility to live normally and given give birth normally so it you know it's like without any reason i mean namely this this gene was chosen by the way he did it and we have result we have first two genetically modified twins in this world. And other intrigues during the same Hong Kong meeting, Professor He claimed that actually other women also was pregnancy with the same modified baby. And unfortunately, we haven't any news about uh, that, about fear of uh, that baby as well as about uh, Nunu and Lala and uh, Lulu and Nana and Professor He as well. Why? Because um, after so huge and a very hot discussion in media, uh, China's government actually claimed that Professor He did it without any kind of permission. And now Professor He under the investigation, his lab closed, his um, uh, company also closed it, and we have any contact with professor as well as with parents of girls and especially with that third woman without any names. So it's really big pity because we haven't any idea what's going on with girls, how they're growing up, how they develop. It's, it's really interesting. So uh, by the way, this work shown us that it's really possible to use this instrument. And of course, uh, I forgot to tell you that it's also important moment. Professor, he did it with Com with combination in combination with other important and very nice technique as IVF, because in other case it wasn't impossible to do. So, by the way, this work shown us that it's really possible to improve some kind of our function and probably hack hack it our nature, right? Uh, let's see, is it true? And uh, but first of all, we should think about what we know about our genes, about gen our genes function. And of course, if you are going to do some kind of Superman or let's say s uh, speed or flash, does not matter, I don't know <laughs> what kind of idea you have in for future, but of course it's very attractive to improve your function and, and create some kind of Superman, right? Uh, but before doing that, we should really clearly understand what's going on with our body during any kind of athletic performance, right? Uh, what kind of muscles and system involved and what kind of genes drives and orchestrate of our biochemical changes in our body during any kind of physical work, right? And a lot of knowledge actually came from sport genetics. Actually, it's logical, right? <laughs> And first attention actually to find some kind of difference in specific gene markers, which would be linked with better movement or better um, athletic performance, actually um, dates at the early 16th. And I would say that probably first investigation uh, in this case was done during Mexico Olympiada, where international a uh, group of scientists really discovered and uh, uh, analyzed it, uh, more than 1,000 uh, sportsmen. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> so, but unfortunately, first, first result actually wasn't informative for us. And uh, for today, I would say that uh, two better discovered and known genes in this case Actually, this one to genes, AC1 and ACTN3, it's uh, acronyms of genes, but it's adenosine-associated adenosine enzyme and actin number three. So, these two important genes, actually, we all have these genes, but uh, only some of us has a special variance which really link it with better uh, athletic performance. And uh, scientists discovered, a lo uh, analyzed the DNA from uh, many, a uh, huge number of uh, elite athletes and discovered that a lot of them really has this special variance which looks likely associated with, with better and uh, force running um, 
I mean, fast running and better athletic performance. And for example, if you know Hussein Bolt, he also has these special variants. But uh, later researchers also showed that no, not only these two genes involved in better athletic performance. And uh, for example, for the now, uh, with uh, elite athletic DNA using uh, more than 90 genes related with endurance related markers, were discovered for today. Can you imagine? It's a huge number of genes, right? Mostly all the genes involved in uh, our um, biochemical machinery and, and provide our um, uh, energy and provide a controlled energy production in our cells. And uh, all of the, um, some part of these genes also important for cardiovascular system working and of course, of course for muscle architecture. So, and the same for the force. For today, we know more than 60 genes, genes marker which related with force and with force performance. And one of them, IGF-1, it's insulin growth factor. You know, insulin, we already talked about them. It's really important. This gene and other one, like partner of this gene, insulin growth factor receptor, uh, both, of the, both of these genes quite important for mass mass uh, for um, muscle mass and uh, it was shown for example the low level of this gene linked with disability moving disability with aging for example uh, but from the other way endurance training uh, really uh, support higher level induce higher level of this uh, protein in uh, blood and as well this gene associated with muscle hypertrophy with uh, special force and so. But uh, also interesting that the same gene, IGF-1, also important for tissue regeneration. It was shown that namely this gene very extremely important for motor neuron degeneration and uh, active muscle preserving with aging. And other nice gene, CCL2, also important for muscle regeneration after injury. So, it's just, you know, small uh, top of huge iceberg. We really know about, we really knew a lot about our genes, about genes function. And it really is possible just uh, pick up one gene, modify it, and give such kind of uh, better better characteristic to someone for example but before doing that we should remember about our nature for example it's our first challenge actually our genes and our nature you know uh, everything is complicated actually <laughs> and uh, one of um, one of uh, important dogma of uh, in molecular genetics it was one gene one protein actually doesn't work and uh, for the now, we know that one gene uh, may have a lot of function, different function in different tissue and under different process, for example. For example, during embryogenesis or during the aging or during neurogenesis, for example. And we should take an account, of course, before doing something with this gene, right? And uh, again, one gene, one protein, it's absolutely wrong dogma actually because now we know that for example one protein could be coded by few genes for example or one gene can be uh, can code it a few proteins like our immune system for example and all antibody what we have actually it's uh, all 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 this antibody signaled by separate genes but we have a lot of antibody much more than we have genes for uh, our antibody in our immune system so and the same story happens actually with Lulu and Nana. I hope you remember twins, right? For example, from one side, I already told you, mutation of this gene, CCR5, really provide huge protection from HIV from one of them, right? And uh, also was uh, shown uh, that uh, down-regulation of this gene or mutation in, th in this gene provides better recovery after stroke and traumatic brain injury. That is really good news, right? And uh, I would say even more. For example, uh, for now, people use this knowledge. For example, for now, developed really nice drug, Revamiloc. 
and people using this uh, drug really for better recovering after stroke. And uh, main action of this drug is really down regulation of this gene. So also with mice using was shown for example that down regulation of this gene or mutation in this gene enhanced memory and cognition so probably girls really would be like genius but unfortunately we haven't any possibility to check it but from the other side this gene is very important component of our immune system and it's like first barrier in lung cells against flu virus and can you imagine that uh, people who has mutation of CCR5 gene has extremely high lethality I mean a four times higher even after the flu so it's quite dangerous especially in China you can I see I, I hope you understand what I'm talking about and even as a lot of other viruses like encephalitis dengue yellow fever and many other it's a huge challenge for immune system of such kind of people and for example for now it's absolutely unclear why but mutation of this gene associated with short lifespan uh, of course, for Ukraine, it's not a big deal because it's around 76 years. So for Ukraine, it's like normal lifespan, right? But for such countries like Japan, it's, uh, you know, pretty unpleasant surprise, let's say. And also other intriguing things, for example, it was shown that people who have multiple sclerosis and this mutation, they have high mortality. And for now, we actually haven't answered why. So, my main idea is that uh, before going to do something with human embryo genes, we should actually dissolve three main biological problems. First of all, CRISPR-Cas. I told you, unfortunately, this system has off-target effects. So, CRISPR-Cas system should work more efficiently and more accurate. Actually, a lot of labs in the world and scientists work in this field. And there are two options, for example, better wide RNA prediction, this special K, what I told, what I showed you on one of the first picture, and of course, Cas9 modification. And people actually doing that. So probably after five or 10 years, we will have really good system <laughs> able to work very accurate. And second problem, of course, our knowledge is about our gene function. So we should improve it definitely. Because uh, it's absolutely impossible to do something with genes without these knowledges. Because first of all, we should be able to predict and avoid any kind of negative side effect before changing some genes information. And third one, and probably more difficult things, uh, actually it's uh, <coughs> mosaicism or hymerism. You know, it's very difficult to control um, gene stability in whole embryo. Actually, it's possible to change genes when we are going to work with one cell, only with all side. And uh, when we are going to use CRISPR before parents per nucleus fusion, uh, namely in the moment of fertilization. But it's difficult to control gene stability, even modified gene stability, after when embryo is going to divide. And uh, the same happens with Lulu and Nana, actually, because uh, some cells of their body has mutation in CCR5 gene, some no. Uh, some cells has uh, mistakes after CRISPR box, some cells no. And it's not because of CRISPR actually, it's all times happens in our nature with us because mutations. And mutations happen all our lives and mutations is our main source of our genome plasticity and variability. And genomes actually, uh, sorry, and mutations actually a main source of evolution for humans actually and for any other spaces. So, and it's really difficult to solve this problem. And uh, mosaicism or hymerism, what is that? And uh, it's known from Greeks, from anti Greeks, but uh, yeah, of course, it's a really strange creature, part lion, part goat, part snake. But in biology, actually, we are using this term 
for definition absolutely clear organism. For example, for definition organism which puzzle it uh, from, mm, from cells with different genotypes. What does it mean? It's cells with different individual set of genes or collections of genes. And uh, actually it's pretty common in nature, especially in, in plants, for example. But it's also possible to meet uh, Chimera even in humans and maybe even here, who knows. And uh, really detective story happens in Washington with uh, Lydia Farhit. I, I hope I pronounced her surname right. So it was in uh, 2002. So she has a two baby and uh, for that time she was pregnant, the third one, and she wasn't happy in her marriage, so she was separated with her husband and it was necessary requirement to do DNA analysis for providing and clarifying uh, paternity of her, of, her, of her husband, actually. So it was a huge surprise for her, actually, when DNA analysis revealed that actually her husband uh, was father of their kids, but she seemed wasn't mother, wasn't their mother. And for her it was a really huge problem, actually, because uh, prosecutors actually came to her two babies to be uh, taken uh, off from her. So it was, you know, a really a dangerous situation for her. And as uh, <coughs> time came for her to give her third baby, judge uh, ordered uh, to be observed, to be present on uh, bureaus. And uh, to be sure that uh, blood samples would be taken immediately after bureaus from both of them. Body, uh, baby body and Lydia body. And after two weeks, after DNA analysis, it was huge as a surprise. Actually, she wasn't mother, genetically. And it was absolutely impossible because actually she doesn't go into use IVF technology or donated embryo. So, but lucky for her, she, uh, her lawyer actually have read before really interesting story about other woman, Mrs. Kagan. Uh, Mrs. Kagan has uh, a son and her son uh, was quite ill, so she decided to donate kidney for him. And again, after DNA, DNA analysis, her doctor realized that actually she wasn't genetically mother of her son and it was impossible to use her kidney for saving her son's life. So. After that, doctor decided to provide uh, deeper DNA analysis and use uh, different tissue, for example, like not only from blood, but from uh, uh, epithelia, from uh, womb epithelia, from thyroids, and many other, many other. And after they discovered, actually, that uh, Mrs. Kagan was her own twins. She was Chimera. And only her blood cells has one set of gene or collection of gene and all her other tissue, it was fusion for two individuals, her own and her twin sister. Sometimes it happens. Uh, after fertilization, for example, two early embryos really able to fuse it and created one chimeric embryo in mom's womb. And as, as a result, really um, chimeric body developed and came in this world. So sometimes it happens. Uh, the same uh, Lydia's uh, lawyer asked about extra DNA analysis and after they really realized that she also a chimera and she is really mom of for all her <laughs> three kids. And of course, finally, judge uh, believe Lydia, she was mother of and actually stopped the case. But uh, for today, uh, maybe around 100 of cases for human hemorrhism was discovered and described. Uh, so we would say that it's quite rare, or maybe it's because uh, not all people really knew all truths about themselves. And of course, that lady wasn't first and mostly famous chimera. For example, interesting cases happens with Fuakli Dilemma, nice woman on first picture. 
It happens in 1950. Actually, she was Dutch athlete and she was uh, named athlete of match when she uh, was winning uh, 100 and uh, 200 tries in tournament in London. But after she was uh, expelled from national team uh, after when refused mandatory sex DNA analysis. And later analysis revealed that, that actually she was woman hammer with uh, Y chromosome. You know that it's man's marker. So probably she was uh, her own brother also. So unfortunately for her, her career was stopped. Her national record for 200 meters was arised, and she came back to her small town to and provide at least one year at home without any kind of living and contact. And after she spent quite life, uh, very quiet life, and all times tried to refuse any kind of talk talk about her sport career about this subject. Uh, but other example. It's not about singer Taylor Muchel. She's not so quiet. <laughs> she's very open. She's very often guest on a kind of TV show, for example. Quite recently, she realized that this big birthmark on her torso causes by hymerism. So she is also her own sister. She is also hymera. And uh, other interesting example, microhemorrhism. Actually, it happens even more often than that uh, cases what I already told you. During pregnancy, body, uh, mom's body and fetus body actually connected the rose placenta and blood vessels. And uh, fetus stem cells migrated into the body and colonized mom body. And actually, it's really good from one side because Namely, these stem cells is really good and uh, strong resource for mom body regeneration during pregnancy, during uh, baby delivery, and even after. So we would say that after pregnancy, women never have been like before. And what's more important that with each the next pregnancy, the level of hymerization would be higher and higher. So, if hammerism happens in nature, maybe it's not so danger, maybe it's not so scary, right? We should just take, in a, take this, uh, this idea and know about that. So, recently in 2017, it was reported about first human speaks chimera creation. Maybe you hear something about that. So, why scientists do it? For what? Does it just play in God or it's we really need it? And I would tell this yes, we need it. Why? Maybe you know that one of our main problem in medicine, for example, in transplant in transplantology, it's huge waiting in list of people who are waiting for organs. And we haven't uh, needly number of organs and at least donors also. It's a huge problem actually and for honestly a lot of techniques actually uh, now developing for solving it like uh, cells engineering, tissue engineering, stem cells using and reprogramming cells and 3D printing but uh, for now actually like gold standard, like better decision for some really difficult organs like heart, kidney, liver for example, it's really donated organs. And in such way, we also can think about other type of transplantation, like standard transplantation. What does it mean? It's transplantation between different spaces, like from cow to human, like from pigs to human, and so on and so on. And pigs, of course, in this case, were suitable for us, because pigs are uh, quite closely for us genetically, biochemically, and uh, anatomically, and uh, what more important, organ size of pigs and our are pretty similar. So, very, uh, uh, very known scientist in this field, in the in field of uh, gene editing and CRISPR-Cas using George Church, uh, opened it recently a special, specific um, startup. It's called Egenesis, Egenesis. So, and 
what they are doing. Actually, they are they going to create genetically modified pigs. And uh, Egenesis pigs has a lot of actually modification in their own genome. First of all, with CRISPR-Cas using, scientists knock, uh, knock out more than 30 right retroviruses uh, um, in the pig's genome. Uh, it's really a huge number. And it's first, uh, actually, it was uh, done first uh, in this world. For, for one round of manipulation, 30 genes was knockouted. What does it mean knockouted? It means that it was rised or um, switched off from the genome. And why it's important for us? Because uh, actually pigs has their own viruses and we have our viruses. And it was shown experimentally that pigs viruses can occur actually inflammation and even cancerogenesis in recipient after any kind of tissue transplantation. So such kind pig, such kind of pigs really, you know, more safety, safety for patient in future and uh, it looks like uh, we haven't any kind of danger, I mean, after this virus, this infection, if we are going to use them for organ donating. And other line of modification, actually, it's immune system, because it's obvious that we have different immune system with pigs, right? And it's danger because our immune system will re recognize any kind of uh, invasion and um, other tissue and of course we'll try to reject this tissue. So this pigs has a lot of modification in uh, immune gene system. Particularly uh, they doesn't express more pigs genes and express it humans genes. So scientists just knock, uh, knock out pigs humans genes, I mean pigs immune genes and knock in I mean, introduce it our genes of imu our immune system. So uh, these pigs has have um, hymeric immune system. So it seems to would be much better for any kind of immune uh, solving immune problem in future with recipient after actually transplantation such organs. So and. Uh, for the ending of our story, I would say that really um, our life probably after 20 years would be much longer and what more important uh, up to me, much better. I mean, quality of life would be much better because um, cells engineering, tissue engineering, stem cells using, of course, 3D printing, all these techniques together, and together, of course, with gene editing approaches like CRISPR-Cas9 and all the techniques is also quite useful, uh, but maybe not so easily and not so cheaper, <laughs> by the way. Thankfully, to progress in biotechnology, it would be able to create much better conditions for ill people, for people who really need new liver, new uh, bladder or new heart, for example. And it would be possible to really uh, hack a lot of problems, I mean, with our genomes and not only. And, you know, it's really realistic prognosis because a lot of this strategy already going to be useful even now. For example, can you imagine that uh, combination of 3D printing and stem cells from patient, we are able to create new vessel and new bladder for patient right now. It really works, and really patient who already uh, got such kind of organs and uh, living after that much better. And Japan, for example, is the first country who improved using iPS cells, a specific type of uh, stem cells, for treatment of bladderness. So it's really impressive things. And we have a lot of progress with CRISPR-Cas using for um, uh, treatment of uh, myodystrophy, Duchenne myodystrophy. Maybe you know something about this uh, illness. It's really uh, dangerous, let's say. It's so. And these protocols really are ready for preclinical tra tra trail. And we have a lot of progress again with this CRISPR-Cas system 
against any kind of viruses infection, not only HIV, but also herpes viruses, Epstein viruses, and already people are using this CRISPR-Cas system for modify our genome, I mean, in adult person, not, I'm not talking about now, <laughs> about embryos, but uh, they are using with uh, blood cells of adult person who already have this invasion and using CRISPR-Cas for deleting it, for rising it from our genome. And it's really impressive. So I really believe that after 20 years we will have huge progress, thankful to biotechnology, of course. So thank you for your attention and if you have some kind of question I would be happy to answer if I know if I know. <laughs>